Welcome everyone, this is Shadow Drake, and so today we're going to have something a little different. So, with face changing, um, I figure I'm going to make, this is a supplementary video to describe how to either be aware of it or prevent it, or how to even work with it on the planetary atmosphere. So we're just going to, we're going to take a massive field trip throughout the entire solar system to see what happens. Now. Welcome to Moon. There is lovely Earth. The sun is straight ahead. Probably the easiest planet. Well, Moon. But uh, one of the things about Moon is uh, no atmosphere. So while you may think this may be easier for setting up habitats and stuff, the biggest problem is heat will just radiate out. So that means anything outside exposed to the vacuum of space will just constantly radiate heat out until it, any gas will freeze. So if, if you're going to store anything out in the moon, you want to do it in insulated tanks. As you can see, this fuel tank is in an insulated tank. Temperature isn't changing. There's no convection energy because there's no atmosphere, but radiated energy is what you want to pay attention to. This tank right here is not insulated, and as you can see, it is slowly radi radiating out energy. Now, while this is going to be very slow, there is still a ton of gases in here. So this temperature is going to very, very slowly drop to nothing. And to kind of demonstrate this point, there is a tank of CO2 here that was being cooled. And this radiator is radiating quite a lot of thermal energy. Um, before we get to that, you can always go back and check the gas card information. And the most critical pieces of information for avoiding phase change or seeing if it's going to happen is to check its freezing temperature, negative 217 Celsius, and also its max liquid temperature. These two pieces of information are critical, and the phase change curve will also help but honestly, if you keep in mind these two temperature ranges, you will at least have, you can at least hopefully predict if you're going to have an issue with liquids or an issue with it freezing. Now, because this is the moon, every gas will eventually have this problem if it's allowed to radiate out. So let's just remove this pipe segment, leaving this to cool. And we're going to watch that it's just going to very rapidly cool. Now, if this was just a tank of gas, it's going to do this much slower. But for the sake of speeding this up, we're just going to leave this on a medium radiator. And one thing that you notice is that even though it started at 80 Celsius, it is rapidly cooling. So let's take a look at CO2's phase change diagram. So you can see at negative 8.1 Celsius is the max liquid temp. So we're going to begin to see liquids once it's negative 8. If it ever makes it to negative 55, it's going to start freezing. One thing that you can also notice is that as it radiates and gets to a lower temperature, progressively less and less radiate heat will come out. And that is because, well, I'm actually curious on that. Thank you for that, suit lady. Um, before orbitals and phase change update, the worlds had like a world temperature that they could radiate down to. For the moons, moon and Mimas are the only vacuum worlds. Now for the moon, that data pad said it was at 273 Kelvin. But I really don't believe that that is the case anymore because this will cool below zero. So I was wondering if maybe that would affect how much radiates out. Also, let's keep in mind that the sun is overhead and it is providing some thermal energy to this radiator. It might not be doing much because it's not really properly aligned to it, but it should. It might actually be slowing it down. So for those of you who are new, probably wondering what you need to worry about. 
uh, you may have started on the moon and had a tank of gas outside stored. And you may have left on a long mining trip and eventually came back uh, to either a busted tank or, well, busted tank, empty tank with a busted pipe somewhere. All right, we should see condensation soon. There we go, condensation is occurring. So as you're gonna notice, this condensation is gonna be happening. Ooh, gonna massively stress out the pipes. I'm gonna go on ahead and put a condensation valve and put a few liquid pipes here to try to capture this, because I, I want this to break due to freezing, ideally. But if you left out on a mining trip, came back to a busted pipe, you can see that this is going to break it before it even freezes. As you can see, one of my pipes getting damaged. You'll come back to everything empty, and you'll see an indicator for a pipe busted. So let's just get all the liquids out. I want to get this fr uh, frozen. So I do have a fail safe. Now you may you may have seen a pipe bust due to freezing uh, over two liquids, and you may have thought, "Hey, let's put some liquid drains." So this is going to act as my pseudo liquid drain. But let me tell you, that's only a band aid to this. Once we hit negative fifty six Celsius, nothing will save this. And as you can tell. The act of condensation for this CO2 is releasing some latent heat, and it's going to slow down how fast this drops. But this isn't something to, this isn't something you can rely on, because we're just condensing CO2 that's present. There is a finite amount, so unless you're constantly pumping in CO2 into this, you're eventually going to condense out everything that you can and you won't have that buffer anymore. So, main takeaway, vacuum worlds, anything that is outside will eventually freeze. It's going to keep radiating thermal energy until the gas hits its freezing point. How can you use this to your advantage? Well, I'm making some free liquid CO2. For some reason, I want to pump some liquid CO2 somewhere. I can do that. But this doesn't have to be with anything. This could be with any gas. You want to make liquid nitrogen? Fine. Just start getting it cooled to negative 83. Liquid, liquid volatiles? Same thing. Negative 78. Liquid pollutants? Same thing. Well, this one's 152. But it will get cold enough to eventually condense. You just keep it high pressure. Oh, there we go. Freezing. Oh, there we go. Destroyed due to the presence of freezing gases. See, my world is throwing out some frozen CO2. So if you went on a mining trip, came back, probably would have seen this. And it would have been busted. And then the whole thing would have been empty. Look how fast it's cooling down, the less there is. So, main takeaway, moon, moon and vacuum worlds. If you got to store something outside in a tank, fine. That's, I would recommend an insulated tank. If you can't, if you really need some storage, I hope you made an inside habitat or are planning on. Because then you can come inside and store on uninsulated tanks. Inside, where there is atmosphere, to keep it from radiating and freezing. Like this water tank is inside purely for that reason. Now, absolutely do not store furnace gases inside for obvious reasons. You don't want to toast your base and kill all your plants. All right, now that we're done with the moon and, moon and Mimas, Mimas is gonna be the same thing, except you just have Saturn in the background instead of Earth. Let's take a quick trip to Mars. All right. 
Welcome to Mars. Alright. One of the big things of Mars is it's our first planet with atmosphere. Now, it sports a very oops. It sports uh, mostly carbon dioxide, some nitrogen, some oxygen, some pollutants. And the temperature varies. Unfortunately, it's turning daytime. So, but it'll go from roughly 20 Celsius daytime to negative 40 at night. And I wanted to talk about, without, uh, without a doubt, so phase change. Unlike the moon, since you have two set temperatures, you can kind of work with that. You can build non-insulated tanks outside. The thin atmosphere on Mars will mean that they are either going to be on the upper end, 20 Celsius, or the lower end, negative 40 Celsius. This does not mean that you won't have problems. You still need to consult the phase change diagram for each gas to see if there is a problem. Uh, the first thing to always check is, again, freezing temperature. I mean, if we check nitrogen, its freezing temperature is negative 233. Its liquid temp is negative 83. Perfect. You can store this outside in Mars all day long. Let it cool, let it heat up, whatever. No phase change will occur. You won't have freezing, and because the max liquid tank is negative 83, no way any of it can condense. Perfect. Let's jump on over to a gas that can. Pollutants. It freezes to negative 100 Celsius. Awesome. Won't have exploded pipes due to freezing. <sighs> Take a note of this. 152 Celsius max liquid temp. So, key takeaway, you can expect pollutants to condense if you leave them out in Martian atmosphere. So the more pressure you have, the more, pretty much the more likely you're going to get it to condense. So if we hover our at our phase change diagram, if you let it cool down to 20 max on Mars Martian atmosphere, looks like if you're over 3,560 3, kilopascals, or 3.6, let's just round it up, 3.6 megs of, of pressure, and you have pollutants in there, gonna condense. You're gonna have liquids. You still need to take care of the liquids. And I believe since Mars goes down to negative 40, uh, look at that. You need significantly less pressure for the pollutants to condense. So, key takeaway, gotta keep an eye on the liquids for pollutants. So, you can use liquid drain valves or condensation valves and push the pollutants to a, t a liquid storage tank, which I highly recommend if you want to store pollutants. I mean, if you want to store them, uh, I can tell you pollutants are going to be mostly used for, uh, at, for uh, AC type systems. So, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at nitrous oxide. Ooh. Freezing, negative 21 Celsius. You could have nitrous oxide freeze outside. That key thing right there is one reason why I would recommend storing it in insulated tanks. It's probably unlikely that it will hit that low. But do you really want to risk it hitting that low? Insulate it. Have no problems. Make sure you have no problems with the AC on that. And just like balloons, max liquid temp. It's going to condense. Let's look at water. Yeah, water is going to freeze. I recommend not storing it outside. And water just likes to be liquid. Enough said about that. So, key takeaways from Mars. You have... You could have storage issues with pollutants, water, and nitrous oxide. The easiest thing would be to store them in liquid tanks. Yes, you can store pollutants and nitrous oxide in liquid tanks for your use. But you will have to keep a careful eye on water and nitrous oxide stored outside that isn't in insulated tanks. Every other gas will be fine. But now let's take a look at another thing that you might be doing. You might actually decide to suck in Martian atmosphere to grab 
with little oxygen it has, or nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. But if you're in nighttime specifically, recall that the max liquid temperature of CO2 is negative 8.1. Some of it will condense. Also recall that pollutants will condense at a high enough pressure. So let's let's see this in action before the temperature climbs too high. I got my power vent because it's much faster. There you go. See? Keep a very careful eye on if you are doing any sort of uh, atmospheric grab, you know, using vents to grab the atmosphere. As you can see, nighttime, very easily can condense both CO2 and pollutants. Now you can take advantage of this, but how you take advantage of it is up to you. Because after all, you could just put a condensation valve and force the liquid CO2 and pollutants out, and eventually you just have nitrogen and oxygen left. If that's what you need, awesome. It can be a proper filtration. But just wanted to make it make you aware that if you suck in Martian atmosphere, you're going to have liquids. It's either going to be just pollutants at daytime, or you're going to add CO2 pollutants if you suck them in at nighttime. All right. With that in mind, <laughs> let's go to the next planet on the list. That will be Europa. All right, welcome to Europa. <clears throat> Don't mind the facelift. So, here we are in Europa. And uh, I guess the one word that best describes this is freezing. Absolutely freezing cold. It is cold as ice, as you can tell. Oh, but unlike the moon and Mimas, we actually do have an atmosphere in here. It's purely oxygen. And as you can notice, this lovely temperature of negative 140 Celsius, it is pretty cold. So, let's see what gases... Okay, I was going to say what gases won't have phase change issues, but I think the better term is, let's see what gases won't freeze here first. So, uh, clearly oxygen won't freeze. It still needs negative 217 Celsius. Ah, I forgot to mention, nighttime Europa gets down to negative 150, and the storm in Europa brings it further down to about negative 170. So, uh, oxygen won't freeze, but you still also have a liquid temperature. Uh, organized. Freezing first. Let's go with freezing. Okay, oxygen won't freeze. Nitrogen won't freeze. Carbon dioxide freezes. Volatiles won't freeze. Uh, but it really is easy to say the three gases that won't freeze is oxygen, nitrogen, and volatiles. The other four freeze. Yeah, that definitely freezes. Freezing. So... With that in mind, I can't even say that no gases will have phase change issues if you choose to let them be here. Because while CO2 pollutants, water, and nitrous oxide freeze and obviously will be a problem, oxygen has a max liquid temp of negative 111 Celsius. So cold enough that some will condense under high pressures. Look at nitrogen, same story, will also condense. Take a look at volatiles. Once again, negative 78.1 Celsius will condense. So with that, Europa will freeze four of our gases and will allow the other three to condense if you leave them exposed to the atmosphere. And I will say, you have a fairly thick atmosphere here. It's going to sap out energy relatively quick if you're not paying attention to it. Probably fa a little faster than what the moon and Mimas would do. Probably. 
So, with that, let's... Uh, mm, as common, if you're storing anything outside, insulate the tanks, please. Just insulate the tanks. Because otherwise, you'll be storing oxygen, volatiles, and nitrogen in liquid tanks. Because high pressures, they will... They will cool down enough to uh, condense, and you'll have liquids and busted pipes if you don't watch out for that. <clears throat> so, with that, uh, one trick you can use this cold Europa, uh, Europa and oxygen air. If you use an active vent, you can begin condensing your oxygen. And as you can see here, this is the first stage of my heat pump. You can get it up to negative 111 Celsius. That's still not room temperature, but that is a that can be a solid starting point for extracting heat from uh, Europa. Whether you change two ACs or do an entire complicated phase change heating device loop. One thing I do also need to mention is you need to be careful about your airlocks because when your airlock is pushing that cold oxygen into pipes again it will condense and without a passive vent in the or a pipe cal to let that uh cold oxygen out it more than likely would cause a break now you can use this to your advantage though you could pump in your open air so that you can condense and have liquids and force a pipe to break but if you are going to do that, make sure it is not a pipe that is bordering a wall. Because if that breaks, then that pipe will connect the outside air to your inside. And that could be bad. Instead, you want to make sure you have a pipe kind of jutting out like this. Break. So, pressurize it. Once you start having enough liquids to stress the pipes out, Remove pipe segments to leave only that one singular pipe there. Once it goes, inevitably goes kaboom, then you can reattach pipes to your active vent and you'll have a quote free passive vent. And just leave it there until you're finally ready to build a passive vent. So, enough about Europa and how cold it is. Let's visit the first of our two hot planets, and that will be Vulcan. See you there. Alright, welcome to Vulcan. Uh, for those who've been watching this Let's Play or will be very familiar with this base setup. So, Vulcan. It is a very lovely hellhole world. Get it? Hellhole? Ah, anyways. It's a very lovely hellhole world that uh, features one very important thing. It's hot! Absolutely hot! So let's let's talk a little about it. At the at the hottest, Vulcan can get at least uh, let let me find steel again because I missed the daytime. So at least six hundred twenty-seven Celsius. So, uh, Vulcan can get very hot, hot enough that you can literally just suck in the outside Vulcan atmosphere to smelt steel. So yeah, that's a nice tip and trick for you. Uh, it gets that hot. I believe it caps out at 663. I need to go back and check because uh, I do forget what the number is. It could be 650. But the point is, hot enough to smelt steel. That's on the full-on daytime. Uh, let me just do another trick. If you... If you lower the pressure down and the, increase the temperature up for your suit so that your suit's internal pressure tries to hit 40 kilopascals and target 30 Celsius, you significantly extend your time in Vulcan. If you do not, this air tank is going to rapidly fill that, ox that uh, waste canister. Oxygen low. Like super fast. You see, I lowered the pressure down and it's slowing down how fast it fills. Low pressure. Oxygen critical. Yep. And see, you don't want to get down to oxygen critical, but 
See? Slow. Let me move myself back up to 40. All right. And as you see, the temperature is dropping. One of the things about Vulcan. Uh, this is a tough planet because, uh, it, it, okay, you're not going to really cool outside. Any radiators for venting heat is just not going to work because you're going to try to expel a little bit of heat. And what you end up doing is bring the heat in. So Vulcan would be a very good test for once you start to feel very confident about your cooling setups. And if you don't feel confident about cooling setups, look, just jump right in. It's just like the other planets. You struggle, you learn, you can do better, and it'll all work out eventually. So, over 650 Celsius, hot Vulcan daytime. But nighttime is a completely different story. It gets down to 127 Celsius. And you can see this dropping. But when it's a night, you have a relatively small window, depending on the season, to kind of cool down. So let's go back to our face change characteristics. So at the lowest, it's 127 Celsius. Let's see if you leave your tanks exposed to the Vulcan atmosphere. Uh, I'll be honest, condensation is probably going to be the least of your worries. It's going to be more of uh, now you have really hot gas that you still need to cool. You're not going to last too long if you leave a lot of gases exposed to this at, uh, atmosphere. So, really the biggest thing would be if something is normally stored as a liquid, like water, let's see where you have a problem. So, water is the only gas currently that has a high liquid temperature, and that is 370 Celsius. So, since Vulcan can get very hot, if you leave a water tank exposed and let it heat up, what you're going to see is the fact that you're going to overpressure that the evaporating water is going to overpressurize your liquid pipe network to over 6 megapascals. Remember, 6 megapascals is how much liquid pipes can handle. Any higher than that, and they go boom. So the issue is not, will I see condensation? The issue is, will my liquids evaporate and explode my pipes? So we're actually looking at it backwards here. Uh, the other the other two, pollutants, 152 Celsius. And nitrous oxide, 158 Celsius. Now the thing about nitrous oxide is that's 2 megapascals. So you have a little bit of leeway there. But I'll just be honest, if your nitrous oxide tank blows up and goes into your, your uh, Vulcan atmosphere, you're just going to make a very toasty fireball. It's all I'm saying. And the reason why you have vol volatiles in your atmosphere. <laughs> Welcome to the hellhole. Even the oxygen you have is a problem. Because your suit pushes CO2, to, uh, cold CO2 from your on, uh, gas, your oxygen canister to cool you down. That means you have CO2 in your waste canister. You open that sucker up in Vulcan and you basically have a, a little fireball waiting to happen at your location. So keep that in mind for you, for any first timers in Vulcan. So now that we know how hot it is, what can you do about this? Let me let it keep going, actually. Recall that I said that Vulcan nighttime gets below 100... Well, gets to 127 Celsius. And we have pollutants in the atmosphere. So that means if you are collecting nighttime Vulcan air, and you start out at night, by the way, you will get liquid pollutants condensing. So, 
you do actually have to worry about con uh, condensation to a small degree, but only when collecting nighttime Vulcan air. You could see your pollutants condense. You could see them lead to pipe breaks. But as you get very familiar and comfortable with phase change characteristics and what happens with condensation and evaporation, this is the opposite case of Europa. In Europa, you want to condense your oxygen to get some heat out of the condensation. In Vulcan, it's the opposite. We want to condense our pollutants so that we can capture the liquid pollutants to let them evaporate so that you have a cooler gas to work with. If that sounds pretty advanced, don't worry. Come back and refer to this when you're ready to tackle that or feel like it is like you can need a good tip to get you started on cooling more effectively. Because trust me, knowing that critical piece of information and working with it can help make your hellhole stay much easier. Now, if this black hole can kindly get to 127 Celsius, I can show you what I mean. I will say that when the temperature swings happen, it's just very rapid. You'll see the air just kind of whooshing, and you'll just suddenly see that you're at that low temperature. Yep, just like that. See? See how air is whooshing around? There you go, 127 Celsius. And just to show off what I mean, I have these cooling towers that literally do nothing but suck in Vulcan, nighttime Vulcan air to condense the pollutants. These pollutants are going through condensation valves into liquid pipe networks. And as you can see, this evaporation is cooling the liquid pipe network. This is going through a heat exchange, which you need tier 2 pipe bender to build. Sorry, it takes a while to get there. And it's you being used to cool a big tank of CO2. And just to show you that it is cooling, this tank is at 120. If I lower this a little bit. Ah, uh, see? 117. 120 to 117. It doesn't sound like much, but trust me. Just the fact that we are removing uh, 8 kilojoules of thermal energy from the Vulcan, from our heat tank, will significantly expand <laughs> our cooling capacity. So, that's what we got to do with phase change considerations on Vulcan. Just remember, anything exposed to the outside is going to get heated up if it's not insulated. You still, however, have the ability to use your the atmosphere. On the low end, you can try to cool with uh, evaporation. On the high end, you can smelt steel. Just don't let any oxygen or nitrous oxide in the air. That will be bad. All right. With our pleasant trip at the hellhole gone, let's visit let's bleh, let's visit Earth's twin, Venus. All right. Last trip because I mean my miss is the same as the moon. Welcome to Venus. It's not like Vulcan Hellhole, but uh, it's hot. It is absolutely hot and foggy, and probably might be the only one with a working storm. It's hard to tell. So, 240 kilopascals of pressure, enough to pop iron walls. 464 Celsius. Very, very flippin' hot. This does not change. The only time it changes is when it storms and it gets a little lower. It goes from still hot to uh, still quite as hot. Uh, so if you're in Venus, uh, you don't really have to worry about much phase changing other than uh, liquids evaporating and exploding liquid tanks. Because nothing is ever really going to condense. The closest you will get to is water at 370 Celsius. And I believe that can condense during a storm. 
but currently on the build, storms tend to be iffy and or not working. And, uh... I'll applaud you if you can somehow manage to cool everything you need to on a single storm. So, Venus is the hardest planet because of that. This temperature does not change. 460 is still enough to, uh... It's still enough to smell ores. Let me do the math. 460 plus 273. 733. Yeah, that's still enough for ores. Some ores to smelt. Not enough for iron or silicon, though. But, uh... Yeah. Hot. And the same thing applies with Vulcan. If you turn down your pressure and turn up your temperature, you can extend how long you stay up here. But it's still... Uh, you're going to be inside a lot. If you're going to have anything outside insulated, it's going to heat up fast. It really does heat up fast. But yeah, so that's our trip through the solar system. And, uh... Well, hopefully this helps with some phase change related stuff, and let me see if I can uh, recover a save that I may have accidentally deleted. Hopefully we'll be able to continue Vulcan. That's the save I lost. Holy crap, it storms! I haven't seen a storm in days. Okay, so look. 365 Celsius. You can condense some water in this. Good luck, though. Alright, this is Shadow Drake, and hopefully this has helped with some face change considerations, and, uh, we'll see you next time on something. <laughs>